My name is Jenny McGuera, and I am the Chief Technology Officer for Des Plaines Public Schools District 62, which is right outside of Chicago, Illinois, by the O'Hare Airport. Uh, before that, I taught and uh, led teachers in Chicago Public Schools for the past decade uh, as a fourth and fifth grade math teacher, and then as a digital learning coordinator for a network of schools. And throughout my journey as an educator, from classroom teacher to district leader, I've learned a lot about myself, my students, and how we can really impact the classroom to change teaching and learning for the better. And one of the things I learned was to be as crazy as you can. So often in education, we want to play it safe. We want to make sure that our kids don't fail. We want to make sure that we're there to help them succeed in all aspects, whether it be on that one activity, that test in school, getting to the next grade level. We don't want to see our kids to fail. Um, but we have to think a little bit more outside the box than that. We have to be willing to take big risks and failure actually can be a really positive thing for kids to do. One of my friends, Ken Shelton, likes to say that FAIL is actually an acronym and you know all teachers love acronyms and it actually stands for First Attempt in Learning, which I love about that because what it tells us is that failure is necessary to become a better version of yourself. What we learn from that failure and actually what's really important is that second attempt in learning is what allows us to grow, both as people and as students. So when we think about that first attempt in learning, if we don't allow our kids to fail, we're not allowing them to become resilient and bounce back. I think about my beginnings as a classroom teacher and how my walls were covered with anchor charts. My room was a huge fire hazard because there was paper everywhere. And the anchor charts were full of scaffolds and differentiation and supports to help my kids so that any time they were confused or frustrated, they could look to their left or right and find the answer on the walls. And what I didn't realize that I was doing was setting them up for future failure when I wasn't going to be there to scaffold and support them. Because every time they stumbled in my classroom, there was always a safety net. There was always something to pick them up or even to prevent them from that stumble. So they never learned what to do when something goes wrong. So what I started doing as a teacher is allowing them when I saw a road bump coming to trip and fall and re-saw and re-envisioned my role not as someone to help them avoid the road bumps but to be there on the other side when they fell down to help them pick back up and to teach them how to fail well. And when we teach our kids how to fail well, they're learning how to take bigger risks. A lot of times our colleagues and our students don't want to take risks because they've been taught that you should never fail and so they don't want to take the risks knowing that they might not be successful. If we teach them how to fail well, they'll take bigger risks and be able to do bigger things. As practitioners, we need to model this for our kids to show that we're taking bigger risks, to rethink what is the purpose of homework? Do we really need it? How can we rethink learning outside of school walls so it's more authentic? How can we allow our kids to use social media for good and not for evil? How do we get kindergartners on Twitter and allow them to tweet with kindergartners from Osaka, Japan? What would that look like? What would that do for education? And we need to be able to try these big ideas and be willing to make mistakes as classroom teachers because that's how we innovate and push the educational world forward. So as we're thinking about all of this and as we're supporting our students and modeling that failure, think to yourself and say, what's your magic wand wish? If you could change education and you could do something wild and crazy, go ahead and put that in your mind. And then think of all of the obstacles and things that make you scared, the things that you say, I don't want to do it because I might trip there, I might fall, I might fail, and say, hey, that's cool. When I fail, that's going to be my first attempt in learning, and then my second and my third, and I'm going to learn from those failures. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because here's the thing when you take a moonshot. When you shoot, you get in that rocket ship and you shoot for the moon. When you're about halfway there and you see all of the obstacles, you want to give up and turn around. But as we know from all the good space movies, the best thing to do when you're running out of fuel is to keep going to the moon and slingshot around it. Use the gravity. And once you get to the moon and you touch down and you reach that goal, even if it doesn't seem like the same goal you originally shot and uh, went out for, when you look back at Earth and see all those problems that seemed insurmountable, they seem really small from the view from the moon. And so I challenge all of you teachers to shoot for the moon, try something wild, be crazy, recruit friends to your crazy, and teach your kids that failure is only the first step in what can be possible. <laughs>